Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's Art of Passive Income podcast, you've got a real treat. Everybody loves these podcasts when I interview one of our current coaching clients or one who's recently graduated because this person is just a little farther ahead than you and you get so many insights from their experience. And so you can then smart cut your business and learn from them. So I am honored. I am privileged to have Kirk Pert. Oh, Kirk Peart. Kirk <laughs> Peart. There you go. Pair with a T. <laughs> Pair with a T. By the way, yeah. I did that on purpose. I knew it was Peart. And I just <laughs> like when Kirk, uh, you know, helps me out with this with this stuff. <laughs> and I, I know corrected. the name thing is hard. It's all right. So, so Kirk, uh, can you just tell the listener how you got started and how you found uh, the land business and the land geek programs? Sure. Uh, absolutely. So first of all, Mark, thank you so much for having me on the podcast. Uh, you know, as we, as I've said, this has kind of been a dream for me, a long-term dream for sure to be on your podcast and be one of your coaching students who, uh, who you interview. Uh, so you know, I'm, I am I have worked in the tech industry uh, ever since I graduated from college. Uh, and the tech industry, even though it's going through like sort of a change and downsizing now, it's always been doing that. And I've always been caught up in uh, in those in those changes. So I've had more layoffs and company closings than I've had voluntary, you know, leave and move to another move to another company into another job back in 20. 15 or 16, uh, I was going through this, the company that I had uh, worked for uh, shut its doors. And it was one of those things when the doors shut, we didn't even get a, a communication. I showed up at the, at the office at the beginning of January, went to go pull on the door. It's like, uh, 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 oh, okay. And I saw the COO up on the kind of mezzanine and he looked at me and he said, <laughs> <laughs> Like okay, oh, so for those of you listening, Kirk is just shrugging his shoulders. It's just shrugging. Like, Sorry. Yes. Sorry. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, par for the course, no problem. Got another job. And this job, unfortunately, had a pretty long commute. And I have always been of the mindset that uh, you know, been entrepreneurial myself. I love to try, I love to learn. And like being an entrepreneur to me has been always been the best way to try and learn new things and to, and to develop as a, as a human being as well. So, um, you know, I'd always been listening to and looking for my avenue for passive income or a business that I could build. And uh, I had dabbled in rentals a bit myself on my own, but it just didn't suit me. Um, and then I found your podcast during this long drive to this new company that I was working for. And that drive was between an hour and an hour and a half every day. So needless to say, you and I got to spend a lot of time together. You didn't know it at the time, but we spent a lot of time together. Yeah. And I just thought your business model was, Hey, I thought it was too big, good to be true. I thought you were too good to be true as well. Yeah. Thought, so how, how did you get over that skepticism? Because I think a lot of people, and I would, I would be skeptical too. Yeah. The, mar the margins seem just way too good to be true. And yeah. then, there's always the the skepticism. Oh, you know, if it's so great, why teach other people, right? Yes. And I think they're they're legitimate points. So how did how did you get through that skepticism? I mean, for me, really, it was time. All right. So there were a couple of things that had to happen for me in my life. One is, um, just as I continued in the job, the job just wasn't working for me. Right. Uh, you know, the problem for me with with corporate life, at least in these particular companies that I worked in, there's a lot of politics and not as much working and building projects. You know, I'm an engineer by trade and by training. And I love to build things. I love to make things work. And I also love to work with teams and love people. And I didn't get all the love of those things without the sort of like negative of the politics and, you know, upper management, management, sure. like upper management, managing, and just so many other things as well. Um, but I listened to your podcast for a really, really long time before I decided to jump in. And then I also had a, so I left that company, went to work for the last company that I worked for and best job I ever had. Amazing company, amazing culture. 
I still ended up getting laid off. And even though we did a great job for the company, built teams, made them millions of dollars, just leadership changed within our technology department. And when leadership changed, the CTO that hired me was no longer my CTO. New CTO came in and, well, you know, he brought his his team and I was no longer relevant. So that was part of it as well. So kind of like climbing, working hard to climb the corporate ladder, doing all the things that you told are the right things to do. And then just, it's just not working. So you have me going down this one path where things aren't working the way that I wanted them to. And then the other path of learning more about you, learning more about the land business, comparing it to other opportunities there, um, you know, for passive income. And I looked a lot at the rental, you know, kind of multifamily, but the idea of leveraging so much debt, the idea of all the work now, not that this business isn't work, but the late night calls of tenants, toilets, termites, you know, it's like, oh, and I had done it and I didn't have a bad experience, but I could see that if I'm going, if I was going to scale, that would be the thing that wouldn't work as well for me. So, you know, long story short, last job got laid off. I had actually already started boot. I had actually already started flight school. coaching flight school. That's right. So I started yeah. flight school in February of 2021. The other thing, of course, obviously is COVID. So COVID accelerated my desire and my need to, to for me to build some passive income for myself and, you know, not let all of my sort of retirement savings and everything sort of sit stagnant in a stock market that I have no control over. It does this, it does this, it does this, it does this. And right. this and this for your listeners is it goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down more often yeah. down than up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's so. just a, a recipe for financial insecurity. Yeah. I mean, it's so, I, I love watching these or reading the, the news. It's like Elon Musk, you know, Net worth just went down thirty billion dollars in one day. And in one day. I mean, imagine if you're at three million dollars and it goes in half. Like it's yeah. significant for all of us. And the no control, right? At There's the end no of the control. day, you, it's nothing you did. Yeah. You're investing in something. You try to make the best choices, but you don't run that company. You don't run the economics of the world and you don't run the economics of that particular industry as well. So, you know, again, a desire for control, a desire to learn and grow and desire to build something sustainable for me and my family. As my kids got older, it's like, oh, you know, I want to spend more time with them. I want to have something for them. So a lot of things were contributed to me really looking at your business model. And I looked at other land. Um, I looked at other land business models as well. And I tried a few things on my own and Nothing really worked or resonated with me. And so I was like, well, but this guy, Mark, this land geek, he and I are like buddies. He doesn't know it, but he and I are buddies. He's geeky like me. He's technical like me. He's awkward like me. I think you're actually less awkward than me. And, uh, I, I disagree, uh, but I, but but I thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so I jumped into flight school and just have been working it ever since. It's been the best thing ever. It's been an, an amazing journey. So highs and lows, but an amazing journey. Yeah. So what's been your favorite deal? Everybody loves hearing the favorite deal. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I don't know, you know, you know me, when I get asked this question, I'm like, my favorite deal is the next deal. The next deal. <laughs> my favorite deal is always going to be the next deal. Uh, but we did a, a an amazing deal. I'd say it was about this time last year where we had uh, bought a property uh, and it was an expensive property. It was a, we spent 18,000 on that property. That was a big property in Florida. And then we ended up selling it within a couple of weeks for 110,000 on terms. Wow. So 96 months, $969 a month. You know, there are not a lot of deals that I have like that at all. And I don't think I have any other deals like that at all. Um, but the reality of it is you don't get deals like that unless you continuously step up to the plate and, you know, keep showing up and keep doing the work. Everything's a bunt, except occasionally there's a home run. And that was a home run. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. Parmerleys had one of those at boot camp. Well, I, yeah, that was, they that made, was crazy. Uh, they made 197,000. Was that right? Yeah. Something deal. amazingly ridiculous. Yeah. So good for them. Uh, they they've become my idols in this in this space in a lot of ways, and so such great people as well. Yeah, it, and that's, exactly. And, and I think that's that's one of the great things about boot camp is that 
when you get to the community, it's just like, you're just among your people. Like everyone's great. And we were talking about this before the podcast, because how many live boot camps have you been to now? Um, it's a good question. I was trying to tally it up myself. Right. So I think I went to the first Vegas one. I think I've been to three so far. I was Vegas, San Antonio, Atlanta, Vegas, four. I've been to four. four. Yeah. So, you tired yeah, of seeing me yet? I'm not, I, I never get tired of you, but I, you know, I always have that, that anxiety, like, Oh, you know, should we do be doing different material every single boot camp? And I, I thought it was really interesting what you had to say about that. And I also want to know, like, why not, why do you think people should even go to a live boot camp versus why not save the money and save the time and just go to virtual boot camp? Yeah. I mean, for me, this is a no brainer. Um, the live boot camps, even if the material has been the same as what you get in the virtual boot camp, what's what you don't get in virtual boot camp is that connection to other people. Right. At the end of the day, Mark, one of the things I learned along this journey is that money comes from people, right? All work that we do, it's all about people. So if you want to really have a, a huge injection of energy into this business, I think you need to be around people. Now, this business is a lot of like kind of being at home in your PJs, <laughs> right? Alone, right. by yourself, working on your computer, making phone calls and this, that, and the other. So when you have the opportunity, you can be in a tunnel. And that to me is a hard place to be, right? And you kind of are in a tunnel in between our, our your boot camps. And the boot camp gives you the opportunity to get out of that, see other people along the journey. Like you say, maybe they're a little ahead of you. And so you, they're encouraging you. Maybe some folks are a little behind you. So you're encouraging them and you're learning and you're growing. And you also see that this is, it's a real, it's a real business. It's a real endeavor and how it has benefited and how the community has benefited, how you can benefit so much for, from the community, you know, uh, along your journey. But to yeah. me, it's a big deal. No, I, I, I love that. And so as far as advice, if you could go back over two years now and give yourself, you know, the new land investing entrepreneur, Kirk Peart advice. Yes. yes. What, what advice would you give yourself? Oh, that's a great question. I wish I had prepped for that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, you know, I would say, Remember that you don't always move forward in this business at a consistent speed. And it really is a climb. And that means sometimes you're up and sometimes you go back a little bit. And But as long as you keep always moving forward, don't sweat the future stuff. I'm a bit of a futurist, right? Like I, I'm a, you know, look towards the future, calculate a lot and, and do the, the comparison of now to where I want to be, which is just a recipe for sadness. But look back, you know, that, that's, one of the great books that we talk about a lot in the community, The Gap in the Game by Benjamin Hardy and, and Dan Sullivan. So, you know, work hard not to be in the gap. Work hard to to, to understand that you're making pro progress continuously as long as you're continuously working on this business. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, The Gap in the Game, it's, it's this idea of you're in the gap if you're looking out in the horizon and seeing how far you have to go. And the yes. gain is when you look back and see how far you've come. And it's the same exact analysis. Yes. Nothing's changed. It's just your your view has changed. So, Kirk, let's let's look at your your gain. So, okay. from when you started in flight school, then you're almost at the end of co a year of coaching. You're still in coaching. I'm still what, in coaching. I'm what in the elite you, program. What have you accomplished? And what are you most proud of you of your accomplishments? Um, you know, I think I, I've built a business, and to me, that's that's huge, right? That's stellar. I never had one before. I never, but I mean, honestly, Mark, before I, I joined uh, coaching, before I joined uh, the Langee community and in flight school, I'd never sold anything on my own. I never made a dollar myself, right? I've always been a W-2 employee and, and that's how I got dollars into my life. So, you know, my first deal, the biggest, best thing ever, I'm like, I can actually sell a piece of land that I've never seen. <laughs> right, right. Um, and yeah, that's, so, that's going to help with the skepticism too. When you yes. get the first deal. When you get your first deal, you're like, oh, I can do this. But building teams. So, you know, I have a great team. 
oftentimes, you know, I tell my customers this, it may look like I'm doing this by myself, but I'm not, there's no way. I've got a great VA team um, who's been with me almost the entire two years uh, since I, two and a half years, I guess now at this point in two years, because my first person's coming up on their two year anniversary. Wow. Um, learning all of the systems and building all of the systems and being able to take the things that I've learned in my my technology corporate career and apply them for for me and for my family have been amazing as well. And um, how I have transformed as a person, uh, just a lot less anxiety, even though I still have some. Because, <laughs> <Sure>. um, <laughs> you know, working and climbing, climbing the mountain. And uh, just to know that I can do it. I mean, that's, it's amazing. It's amazing. And then how about the passive income? Where, where are you at? So uh, passive income wise, let's see here where we're at. I love to preface this with a couple of things. Everybody has their own journey. Everybody comes to this with different resources and capabilities and strengths. Remember, I've been your buddy without you knowing it since 2016. <laughs> right, right. That's right. <laughs> so, you know, where I know some other people who have just been awesome, they like heard you and within like a month, they're in flight school. I envy that, but that was just not me and I couldn't do that. Um, so where I am today, I'd say our, our passive income is at, I'm looking down, $22,289 a month. That is, now, the reality of it is you you get those non-payers and you get a default here and there. Sure. So I think, you know, given where we're at and what I know, I think we're uh, coming in at around 20613 in the last month. Yeah, I'm a little, I'm a, I'm a numbers guy. <laughs> sure, sure. Okay, so 20,613. We'll just take that number. 20,613. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take it by 12. So if I told you uh, two year, two and a half years ago when you started flight school that you'd have about, you know, let's say $250,000 a year in passive income. And I said to you, Kirk, if you wanted to have that same passive income at the bank, I said, this is how much you're going to have to deposit for a 2%, which is being very aggressive interest mm -hmm. rate. And he said, okay, this is what you go to the bank and say, look, I want, you know, 247,368 uh, a year in passive income. How much do I need to deposit, Mr. Baker or Mrs. Baker? You know what the banker would say? What would he say, Mark? $12,367,800 will throw off a 2% interest. That amount. So how well, I, long I, I, would it take I can tell you that I definitely. That? <laughs> sorry, what'd you say? How long would it have taken you to save twelve point three million dollars? I'm still working on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I would say that. Uh, yeah, there's the. That's amazing, and I certainly, definitely haven't invested that much in the business. That's crazy. But I, I again, I totally understand it. Haven't spent so much time really researching, listening. And, and learning as well. I mean, this business, it generates, you can generate cash flow. You know, one thing I, I would like to, to mention is the last company that I worked for was a franchise organization. So I had visibility into what new franchisees were spending in order to start their business. And a lot of these guys are spending hundreds, if not millions of dollars and not even cash flowing for a year and a half, two years. Right. Right. So, to be able to do that and, you know, to be able to get to where I've gotten to with all of the guidance, of course, and coaching, which to me is invaluable at this point in time. It's just, it's, it's amazing. It's unreal, but I work it every day. So I believe it a hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of funny to me now because I didn't know the backstory of, of listening and being skeptical since 2016, because then when you were in, you're like, I'm going all in. You went into the highest coaching program. We still yeah. haven't even gone to elite week yet which is Ooh. gonna be crazy but i can't wait why why did you just go all in considering all the skepticism from the past it's my personality mark like the way that i operate is you know i'm, I'm a little cautious that's just how i am and how i've always been uh, like i said i'm an engineer by training so i'm very analytical but once i make the decision i'm in okay. and you know we talked a lot about wanting to build a real business, uh, a, a million dollar business. I didn't see any point in doing anything less than that. I don't, I don't want to do less than what I could possibly do. I want to do the most that I could possibly do. And I knew that the elite coaching program was going to be the way to get me there. Okay. That's fantastic. So what's been the 
the hardest thing? We've been talking about all the all the nice things about the business. What's what's been the hardest thing for you? I mean, I think I think the hardest thing is the 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 emotional and mental growth on this journey, right? Because you're pushing for me, I'm pushing through so many different barriers. Um, the, my mindset change around money, money, not as a goal, but money as a tool. I still, I still grapple with that. Sure. Right. And in, in our business, yeah, the passive income is nice, most definitely. But at the end of the day, it's not about accumulating dollars to have them sit in the bank. It's about creating cash flow. Money comes in, money goes out. More money comes in, money goes out. More money, and that is a huge change, especially for me as a lifelong striver in the in the in the corporate world and as a W two employee. And I think a lot of folks. I, I'm sure that a lot of folks identify with that. Yeah, absolutely. And if uh, I mean, you know, let's just kind of talk about you know things that you do to get out of your comfort zone. How do, how do you manage that? Is, is there something you do? Like I meditate and I do breath yeah. work. Like it, it helps me and I do the the cold plunge. And so, you know, when you have a big life, you've got to be able to, to take care of yourself mentally and physically. Is there anything that you do that you think helps you get over that, that get out, you know, when you're in, in that uncomfortable feeling like, okay, I'm uncomfortable, but I got to get out of my comfort zone. I know this is what I need to do to grow, but this yeah. is going to help me manage it. I mean, there's not just one thing, right? So I journal right. like crazy, like yeah. every day I journal. Um, I've created a morning routine that includes exercise. So I kind of use up that nervous energy from the, the first thing, for the first thing of the day. I go for a run or a walk. I get that, you know, all that vitamin D and all that great sunshine as well into my life. Um, I do the meditation and I read a lot and I, you know, yeah, I read a lot. So because this journey is also not one that I found that is uncommon. Every entrepreneur says this, a lot of the same things. Mindset, getting through anxiety, working on your sleepless nights, moving in the direction of your fear and gain, gaining courage through action. So, you know, it helps me feel not alone, you know, and I talk to my coaches. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I'm, I'm actually kind of shocked that you've had the same team from the very beginning because what, I typically see is that as you grow, sometimes there's team members that don't, that, you know, what got you here doesn't get you there. Yeah. Um, what, what are you doing then? Do you think to help your team grow as you grow? So they stay. Um, on that you path know, you? I, I think I'm very honest with and open with my team. Right. So they knew from the very beginning that we're building a business and you're coming in at ground zero. They have been able to see our company grow. I share our numbers with them. I mean, when it comes down to it, they're doing a lot of the inventory management, accounting and tracking anyway. Um, there's no way I could do that on my own. I don't have that expertise and I don't have that kind of time. Um, so I think that's it. I meet with them regularly. I give them the big rah-rah and, and I let them give it back to me. And I think because they because I'm so transparent about how we, where we are, where we're going and what we're doing, they're invested. And so, you know, they're here. So that's great. We've had a few switches out, switch outs, by the way. So it's not like every single one of my team members has stayed in the business. Um, you know, I had a transaction manager or a transaction coordinator and she moved on, but we were able to get another one who I love and is amazing. My first salesperson, we, she did amazing, but it wasn't for her. So I had to go find a couple of others and that has worked out very well also. So you just keep doing it. I think you said it, Mark, where, you know, what you'll find over time is that your, your people may come and go, but your business will continue to go and grow. And that's definitely what I have found as well. Yeah. It's all about the systems and process as, as people come and go, uh, yeah. for sure. So you started with flight school and yes. then you went into coaching. What's the difference for people listening between flight school and coaching? Oh, it's a world of difference. It's completely different. Um, you know, flight school feels a little bit like high school, you know, maybe, maybe early college, but you're learning the basics in flight school, right? Like what's a deed? Dude, I showed up. I was like, what's a deed? Right. right. <laughs> I, I have a house, but I never looked at my deed. <laughs> you know, how to file a deed, how to do county research, um, 
how to find comps, how to do marketing. Like you get a lot of basics in flight school and those basics will can carry you a long way. But then you get to a point where you, you just, at least for me, like, so I did flight school and then I actually worked on the business on my own for about a year after flight school. And um, I had great progress throughout that year, but I, you know, but it took me, I did get to a point where I hit a, hit a wall and I realized that I needed help. And, um, you know, geez, within the first month, I got some great guidance that changed everything. You know, the guidance was you can't sell what you don't have. So get a machine to go get your inventory. Did that world of difference. I mean, amazing. And that's just like tip number one. Everything else I've learned through through coaching has just been amazing. And not just great for the land business, but you know, let's say I go off to do another endeavor, whether it's to start another business, um, you know, maybe go help someone with their business, go fund somebody else's business at some point in time. Like I've learned so much through this process. It's just, you know, and I got a lot of degrees and I've learned more in this than I've got than I got from my formal education. So I, kudos I, to you. Th- thank you. It's yeah. <laughs> that that's that really just warms the the cockles of my heart. Is that <laughs> for sure? Um so this has been amazing, Kirk. And I'm just so proud and uh of all that you've accomplished and all that you are going to accomplish because as I always say, it's the second year of coaching where people really hockey stick their business and it's not going to be long between before you're at 40, 50,000 a month in passive income and the team grows, your systems scale. And it's, it's just so exciting for me to watch you uh, continue to grow. But my final question is how has this business changed your life? Oh, I mean, besides all the things that I've talked about, I think, you know, I'm at a point now where uh, the amount of time that I spend in the business is minimal when I say in the business. So, you know, I'm not at a point where I'm selling all every day anymore because I've got a, you know, a couple of sales folks. Um, I'm not at the point where I'm reviewing every piece of inventory in detail anymore and talking to sellers. So the time freedom and it's freedom, right? I get to decide how I spend my time. I've got two teenage two teenage kids who I love and treasure dearly. And it saddens me to know that come 18, when they leave home, you know, then that's the, what do they say? They say that the first, that the first 18 years of your time with your children is when you're going to spend 90% of the time with them. You know what? Now I get to spend that time. I get to be with them and I get to show them what I'm doing and include them in everything that we're doing as well. And that, that has been the biggest, most amazing change. Just the time to scale life down a bit and spend it with my kids, with my family. Amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. I think you sent me a Vox. It was it last summer? And you said, this is the first time I've been able to spend this much time with my, my kids. Oh. Yeah, last summer, we had an amazing summer. Like we just, we hung out. We, I live in Florida, so we did like a week in Marco Island when it was dead. You know, nobody's in Marco Island in the summertime down here. And we got to spend the time together with my girlfriend, too. You know, we went paddle boarding and we liked a mountain bike. So the amount of time freedom that I have is unbelievable. Huge responsibilities, of course. Sure. But man, time freedom. It's just awesome. Yeah. I mean, I really think in our society, we overvalue money and we undervalue our time. And I think yes. that's where the this business really shines is it doesn't just solve your money problems. It also solves your time problems. And you're a great example of that. You're able to then do the things that really are the most meaningful to you, not just professionally, but but personally and yeah. to spend that precious time. I mean, I've got three kids and I'm at that point. I got my my 90% is up. Now it's that I you know the 10% for the rest of my life. And it's it, you know, but I can look back and I, I have no regrets because I started my land business in, in 2001, quit my job and raised my kids and really was able to be an active dad. Now, that being said, the jury's still out of whether that's a good or bad thing. But for me, <laughs> <not officially, laughs> it, 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 it has been uh, 
Uh, amazing. And so when I hear from you that you're able to also experience that that precious time with your family and be totally present with them. Because so often I'll see people with W-2 jobs will be on vacation, but they're still connected to yeah. the job. They're not really present. And yeah. when you can have that confidence in your team that I can go away two weeks and just really be with the family, it's it's an it's an ineffable experience. It's which I want everyone to to experience. They should. It's it's a beautiful thing. It takes work, no doubt. And you got to get there, but man, worth, worth it. So worth it. Absolutely. Well, Kirk, your, your mentorship has been invaluable, but now we're at that point in the podcast where I'm going to ask you for your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something else actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? Can I give two? You can give three. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you, you, well, you know, back in the old days, we used to give seven. And then Philip Ma was like, Mark, too many tips of the week. Just do one. <laughs> All right. Well, my my two, I think, are pretty simple. So the first one is I talk a lot, and we've talked a lot, and I think I mentioned this at boot camp as well, that this is really a journey, right? Like, and life in general is a journey. And every day along your journey, you you change, you you morph, you become more of who you are, right? Hopefully. So, um, you know, one of the things we talk a lot about or you talk a lot about are the books that you read as tips. And um, what I have found is that for me, it's not about collecting a bunch of different books and reading them along the way, but finding a few that just resonate with you and going back to them as you go along your journey. Because every time you read a book, you know, or reread a book, you're, you're different. And so the information that you pick up on is different. So I've gone back and I've reread books three, four, five times to go deeper as opposed to like getting more and more knowledge from different sources. So I think that to me is one, you know, one of the books that I, I've got a list to Mark. Would you like to hear my list? I love the list. Yeah. Uh, cause, cause I'm, I'm going to start reading these books over and over and over again. <laughs> so one of them is obviously your book, Dirt Rich. Oh, um, I reread that a lot because your story and your journey is very inspiring. And it's why we're all here. Um, the Gap and the Gain is another. Uh, the Change Your Mind, Change Your Life. It's a Wayne Dyer book. Yeah. Um, love that book. That's, that's, a, that's a classic. It is. It is. You know, like the, his, his, uh, his whole expose on the Tao Te Ching, it's just, it's mind blowing. Yeah. Um, and then Atomic Habits. Uh, I love that book. And just the reminder that small improvements compound over time and they lead to large improvements, but you know, you don't feel it in the middle. You just have to kind of wait and you see the change and the growth as you look back. So those are some of my key rereads and that's my tip number one. Um, tip number two, I have a hard time sleeping. I'm not a great sleeper at all, but I found this amazing podcast. Um, it's called sleep magic with Jessica Porter and, you know, she does a lot of like hypnosis type of work as well in the podcast. So things to, you know, stay present, um, you know, use your, the power, the computing power of your subconscious, release yourself from worry and fear. Great, great. I mean, like, I don't need sleeping pills. I just listen to Bleed Magic and like magic, I'm out. It's awesome. So those oh are my, my two gosh. tips. I, I love that. I'm a huge sleep nerd. I don't, did you know I was a huge sleep nerd? I, I do. I do. Yeah. So yeah. this is right up my alley. And <laughs> for those of you who do have issues with sleep, uh, honestly, it's like the core thing. Because once yeah. you get your sleep dialed in, then it makes everything else easier in life. You have more energy. You're not as hungry. So it's easier to control your diet. And diet has so many uh, effects to us in our, our mood and our happiness and our energy. So then you get your, your diet diet dialed in. Once you get your diet dialed in, you're like, oh, I feel energetic. It's much easier to start a nice exercise regimen. And all of a sudden you're you're sleeping, you're you're moving and you're eating really well. Yeah. But it, I think that core piece is sleep. So that's a that's a great tip. And, and I think the the books reading and going deeper into just these core fundamental books and I, you know, for me, I, I think the the book that I recommend the most, especially for this business, is The One Thing. 
And it's just mm. such a great reminder of, of that, you know, small hinges open big doors. And what's that mm. one thing you can do that's going to allow you to, to, you know, solve all of these other things that you're, you're working on, but uh, great, great tips of the week. So my tip of the week is lots of sunshine.com. Check out what Kirk is doing over at lotsofsunshine.com. Learn more about him and his land. And uh, I think I, I can't say it enough, man. I'm just I'm just so so happy, and uh, I love witnessing your journey. And the, honestly, the best is yet to come. So thank you for taking the time to share your your wisdom and your experience. Only two and a half years. You're just still a baby in the land business. I'm just a little baby. You're I just love a little though, baby, man. but <laughs> I'll tell you what. After after Elite Week, you're gonna be uh, you're gonna be a little bit more teenagery. I I do. I you, you keep saying it, I, and I, I have to wait. I know I got to be patient. So I'm just you know keep yes. keep chugging along. I can't wait though. I'm so so excited for Elite Week. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be amazing. So are we ready to do this? We are. All right. Oh, you know, I forgot to mention something. Uh, What's that? By the way, if you want to be like Kirk, he started somewhere and he started with our sponsor, which is Flight School. So if you want to be like Kirk, start at thelandgeek.com forward slash training, learn more about Flight School. And I know what you're thinking, well, what about the investment? What about the tuition? It ain't going to cost nothing, guaranteed. You're going to make it back 180 days or less. Just show us your work and you'll get there. I mean, Kirk, was does coaching cost anything? Um, does coaching cost anything? <laughs> I mean, but it pays for itself, right? I mean, it's look here. It's not an expensive, but it is not an expense. It's an investment. And it does return for sure, without a doubt. Yeah. I, I love that Michaela line. How much is coaching? Didn't cost me anything. It pays for itself. <laughs> so there you go. Truth. All right. Let's do this. One, two, three. Let's let freedom, freedom ring. Ring. Not ding, bad. Ding, ding. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Are you ready to learn how you can start building a passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents? Schedule a free consultation at thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Let freedom ring.